Right, uh, hello again. Uh, it's been a little while since I did the last update on uh, the extension. Uh, generally, I've taken a bit of a break from it because uh, I did loads of work last time around and uh, I've been waiting for various bits and pieces to arrive, but uh, I have accomplished a reasonable amount now to uh, do a video on it. So the first thing that's uh, obviously different is that we've got a, uh, a board on top of the fiddle yard over here and uh, yeah, it's uh, starting to get there. Not too far to go until we connect up to the rest of it. This is a, a six foot board. Uh, I've got another one to go down there and join onto the helix and then there'll be a gap in the middle where the uh, two boards don't quite meet and that'll be where I have uh, a bridge that uh, goes over uh, probably a motorway or something along those lines. Uh, so that should uh, look quite good. I've also been putting in uh, the back scenes because they're quite sort of tricky to put in as well as some more of the polystyrene uh, just to reflect the light a little bit more and give better lighting. You can probably tell already uh, this corner is lit up quite a lot better uh, from the reflection of the light and uh, yeah, it's made uh, quite a big improvement. Those of you familiar with the, uh, the route that the uh, old line used to take uh, will remember that this uh, was the corner, uh, the big sweeping corner that then went off the edge here and down there to uh, the helix and the helix was over that side by quite a bit. Uh, so now it's all moved across and as a result I didn't need the corner over here anymore so uh, I've ripped it all up. Getting the track off was actually relatively easy. Uh, I thought it would be quite difficult due to the amount of glue I'd used when I'd uh, ballasted the track. Um, but the uh, fact that I use uh, the cork sheet uh, to put the track on makes uh, it a hell of a lot easier to get the track up if you uh, decide you're going to make some changes. Uh, that's really the, only, the main reason why I use the cork. Uh, it just makes lifting the track a hell of a lot easier than it would otherwise be if it was all glued to the baseboard directly. Because you can see here, there was no cork here. They had cork there cork there and then the ballast just filled in with the middle and you can see even with a lot of sanding and uh, chipping away with the chisel I still haven't been able to get rid of all the ballast. Uh, this is basically flat you can't really feel the transitional in uh, heights uh, but it does show how much more difficult it is to get ballast off if it's glued directly to the board. It's much easier if it's glued to the cork. So uh, some of you may be thinking well uh, am I just going to use exactly the same sized curve and just move it across over there uh, allowing me to have an extra sort of straight bit over here uh, I'm not actually going to do that I'm going to go for a slightly different approach now many of you are probably aware um, and experienced it in the past uh, and it certainly used to uh, cause me a lot of trouble uh, the biggest enemy to any model railway is the corner uh, particularly because houses tend to be square um, real railways tend not to go around in squares they uh, flow up to various locations and the corners on them are very smooth and relaxed uh, you do get one or two places where there are tight corners to get around uh, towns and cities and bits and pieces uh, but generally the corners are quite relaxed now I'd already had quite a relaxed corner here this was a uh, I think about a 30 inch radius curve so it wasn't wasn't too bad it might actually be a, a 20 inch radius curve I forget what it was now um, yeah, I think it was, it was 20 or 25 inches. Um, now you can see that's quite a nice curve. It's certainly bigger than uh, what the standard offering is. I mean, here's a piece of uh, second radius track. And you can see if I try and fit it in the, uh, the groove where the track used to go, it's much, much tighter. So you can see that this corner was at least double the radius that this second radius curve is. But what I want to do this time is I want to make the corner even smoother. So smooth, in fact, that you don't really know it's there. It's just going to make the whole top side of the layout and the right hand side of the layout and just flow together beautifully. Um, so that's what this black line is for. Uh, this is where I've marked the outer track uh, to run. So uh, if you imagine the corner starts just where the HST is parked and then follows the black line all the way around, you can see that that is going to be an absolutely massive corner. And I've worked out that this corner will be approximately 55 inches. Whereas you look at a piece of second radius track, I'll put it over there, you can see that the, the second radius track will make the turn sort of here and that that will be done, that will be the corner finished um, but it's actually going to run all the way around here, it's going to be absolutely huge it's difficult to really gauge what it will look like obviously at the moment because there's no track here at the moment the track uh, is on the way, uh, hopefully it will be here on Monday or Tuesday um, and that will be that's coming from Hatton's as usual and uh, I've ordered all the point work for the junction where the branch line splits off and I've ordered some cork rolls as well 
Uh, I've got enough flexi track, I think, to uh, do the rest of the straight bits and the corner should be okay for that. So that's uh, pretty much it for this update, really. Um, I've just been doing a lot of work with the baseboard, obviously, putting that in, making sure it's absolutely 100% level. Uh, putting the back scenes in have also been a particular challenge due to the restricted space behind the baseboards. Uh, but I managed to put that in, and I'm running the polystyrene along as well. And I uh, just finished putting uh, that bit in over there. Uh, that will obviously need painting up and stuff to blend in with the rest of it, but all in good time. I just want to get uh, some track down there and actually connect uh, the layout back together and run some trains. Here yeah, we'll give you sort of a, a bit of a better perspective of the curve. Uh, so you can see where the piece of second radius track is down there, um, but the curve is actually going to go all the way across. Keep going, keep going, and then it doesn't straighten out until it gets to where the spirit level is. So it's going to be really nice. Uh, I might also bank it up a little bit slightly, make it a little bit sort of leaned over, uh, like they do on the uh, West Coast Main Line and stuff, where uh, the corners are actually banked to uh, allow the trains to gain a little bit more speed. And uh, finally, just before I go, I have a quick update on the Loco fleet. Uh, I've slowly been accumulating more carriages for the HST. Um, I've now managed to get hold of five. So we've got two first-class coaches, the buffet car, a second-class open coach, and the uh, trailer guard standard coach. Uh, so to complete the rake, I need an additional two uh, Mark III second-class coaches. And uh, I think uh, I've seen a few on eBay already, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem to get hold of the final few coaches. And then I'll make up the full rake. As you can see already, it's it's pretty long, so it'll be quite impressive when it's a full seven-car train and uh, going around the corner and racing down the main line to the helix. It's really going to look quite good. I've also uh, got the airbrush out again, and I've uh, been weathering a, f weathering a few more of my locos that have uh, been long overdue uh, for some weathering. Uh, as many of you know, this is my Intercity Class 47 that uh, is one of my favourite locos. I use it most of the time. And as uh, soon as I'd weathered the carriages it was pulling, I thought it would only be fair if I weathered the engine as well. I've gone for a sort of a light weathering on this one. It's not uh, particularly heavy, just mainly the underframe and the roof has been done, as well as the exhaust uh, as, as expected, and the fans and the grills and stuff. Uh, that's come out pretty well, looks very nice. Now I've also done the same to my other Class 47, the uh, blue one and you can see that's also looking pretty good much more realistic and I've also weathered the class 20 the rail freight red stripe one which is hiding uh, in the tunnel no you can't see it you can't see it at all but I've weathered the uh, the second class 20 uh, so really all I've got left to weather is the class 60 which will be given an extremely light weathering as uh, these were brand new in the era this layout is set uh, they were only a, really a month old or so and uh, I've also got to weather the 37 over there so uh, not too much more to weather and then I'll move on to all the wagons and various other bits and pieces as well as doing the mammoth job of weathering the HST um, again this will be given a very light coat mainly the under frames of the carriages will be done and maybe a little bit on the roof just to take the shine off them because they are quite shiny um, but that probably won't be done for a while, I'll, you know, I'll probably just run the HST as it is uh, to start with. There we go, so uh, that concludes the update. Uh, there'll be another one soon, where as soon as this track arrives I'll be straight up here nailing the track down and getting all the electrics wired up and uh, building the second baseboard. Uh, so in about a week and a half, maybe two weeks time, we might actually have the layout connected back together again and uh, we can actually run trains once more.